Hello, my name is Michael Lambert and today I want to talk a little bit about Brexit and how well it's all going. Um, but before I do that, I'd just like to say something about the election results because uh, a few weeks ago I forecasted if they were bad uh, that uh, the Tories would dump Sunak and I really thought they, they would do. What I didn't take into account, and it's always uh, it's not never very wise to make forecasts uh, uh, when you're making videos, but uh, what I didn't take into account, the fact that... Um, uh, nobody in their right minds would uh, want to take on the, the leadership of the Tory party and become prime minister at this at this time when it's pretty obvious that they're going to lose catastrophically. Now, as far as uh, Brexit is concerned, I, I, I'm sure that um, uh, you, you'll have been celebrating as I have. I mean, non-stop celebrating the, the news yesterday that uh, we're out of recession, that um, the economy grew uh, point six or one percent in the first quarter of this year. Now, we were never actually really in, in, in recession. It was a, it was a technical recession. Um, as I explained once before, a, a, a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth, whereas a technical recession, which is not as bad, is, is two consecutive quarters of, of negative growth. So it, it, although it seemed we were in recession, we weren't really in recession because it was a technical recession. And so anyway, uh, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, was uh, uh, was going around the studios yesterday giving interviews about this this wonderful news and this evidence that the plan is working. We turn the corner and that we're doing, we're, you know, everything is absolutely fine and uh, unkidori. And amongst other things that he said in an interview with uh, uh, the Today programme yesterday morning was that uh, according to the ONS, we are going to have the highest growth uh, of all nations in the G7. That's we're going to grow faster than France, Germany, USA, Italy, and Japan. Now you'll remember that after COVID, uh, uh, just about every Tory politician would tell you that uh, uh, we were fastest growing economy in the G7. You never heard them say anything else. It was just non-stop fastest growing economy in the G7. Well, apparently, well, I don't know where that, that that must have slipped a bit, but apparently now we're going to resume that position and going to be the fastest growing economy in the G7. He also said that we're going to create, we, we are actually creating more jobs than any other country in Europe. I'm not sure how he knows that, but we, we, we are. So, I mean, that's some idea of just how how fantastically the economy must must be doing, uh, uh, for creating all these, all, all these jobs. And he also said, uh, um, without being challenged, he said that uh, uh, we are attracting more foreign investment than any other country in the world, uh, except the United States and China. And he also said that according to the IMF, uh, uh, we can have faster growth than any other uh, EU large country. I, 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 and so, I mean, looking at that, I mean, yeah, it's you know, we are doing really, really well. Uh, uh, and when you look around and and and, uh, I, I, and you look at the the state of the NHS with uh, seven million people on waiting lists, people dying waiting for treatment. When you look at uh, uh, poverty, fourteen odd million people living in poverty, uh, a lot of people unable to feed, feed, feed their children, you look at people using food banks, you look at uh, local authorities going bankrupt, you look at schools falling down with all this concrete problem and, and, and not being repaired in time, you look at the police force having problems because older police are retiring and they're having to take on younger ones and so the average age is, uh, is going down all the time and experience uh, with it. Uh, 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 when you look at the courts where, uh, what is it, something like 60,000 cases uh, uh, are waiting uh, and uh, you know that uh, if you're uh, accused of rape, it's going to be maybe three years before you're going to get to court. Uh, and when you look at the, uh, the the prisons, which are all overcrowded, where there's uh, terrific problems with uh, with violence and with drugs, and where they're having to let prisoners out to make room for new prisoners to go in. And when you look at the roads, the state of the roads, and all the potholes, and all the uh, uh, and all the the work that needs doing, uh, and when you look at the sewage and the rivers and the seas, and when you look at all that, uh, and then 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 we're told that, that we're doing so much better than everybody else. I mean, I mean, other countries must be in a terrible state, mustn't they? Can you imagine if if other countries are worse than us? I, I mean, you know, how do they survive? Yeah, you know, we're we're doing so 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 well. In an article in the Guardian last week, according to the OECD, 
UK is to have the lowest growth of the G7 in 2025 and the second lowest after Germany this year. A bit more realistic, I think. And so much of all this goes back to Brexit. And uh, when you look at the uh, uh, latest news about Brexit, you look at uh, what is being done to make life more difficult, to make it more difficult to do business, to, to impede business, to, uh, to erect barriers, which we have to erect le le legally. When you look at, for example, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of those um, enormous sheds they're, they're building in, or they built in Calais, uh, to accommodate these thousands of cars that will in in the summer will will arrive there, every one of which is going to um, uh, is going to contain people who will need to have bought visas and paid for visas and who will have to have their fingerprints taken and will have to have their face scanned and, and all the rest of the biometric stuff. Uh, I mean, that that adds nothing, nothing whatsoever. It, it is just just makes life more difficult, much more difficult, more complicated. Uh, and when you look at how it's now almost impossible, I've said this so many times before, but almost impossible for small or medium-sized businesses to export to the EU. It's just too much trouble for the customers. And likewise, for, for small or medium-sized businesses in the EU to try and export to the to the UK now is, is so difficult. It's not worth it. You know, if you're a business in the EU and you've got 27 other countries that you can deal with freely, more than 27, in fact. Uh, uh, and if you want to deal with the UK, you've got all this hassle, all this paperwork, all this unnecessary paperwork. It, it, it's just utterly crazy. And there was a, a, a tweet the other day, a couple of days ago, about a guy uh, who has a lorry that was stuck at Sevington, uh, and he waited there for 12 hours. Lorries now will have to be checked, and uh, in this particular case, the lorry uh, was charged £145. He must have had more than the, the minimum number of uh, uh, different uh, products on the on the lorry, £145 for the, uh, the common user charge. Uh, he was then asked to unload the entire lorry and reload it, and that cost £681.19. And, and then his phytosanitary costs were £270, a total of well over £1,000 for one lorry. And he was stuck there for 12 hours, and the driver had to be paid throughout that time, and a, a lorry which maybe cost £100,000 was stood still for 12 hours. The goods in the back, which were food, were all uh, getting deteriorating during that 12 hours. And you think this is for absolutely no reason whatsoever. There is absolutely no justification, no benefit whatsoever in that sort of impediment to trade. It's just absolute utter madness and this is going to happen thousands and thousands and thousands of time of times and, and you're going to find that uh, uh, food is uh, arriving and being held up whilst it whilst it whilst it goes off and you're going to find that uh, you know as i said so many times before uh eu exports are just say it's too much bother to go to the uk we don't want our lorry stuck in, in 70 for 12 hours and the driver moaning and the drivers are going to say we don't want to go to the uk and uh, you know it, it's just so absolutely obvious that EU exports of food to the UK are, 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 are going to be less in the future because we've made it too difficult. And uh, at the same time, uh, again, I've said before, you know, the farmers are all warning now that uh, because of the, uh, the wet winter, the harvest this year is going to be less than normal. And I saw an ad, I saw, I saw a uh, uh, an item on the television a, a few days ago about a strawberry grower in uh, somewhere in Kent, I think, and he normally employs uh, two thousand workers to pick strawberries. And uh, in the past, they've all come from, from 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 the EU. I don't know where he gets them from now, but he 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 was saying that uh, it it takes a while to learn how to be good at this, and by the time they're really good at it, after six months, they've all got to go. They've got to go home. Can't stay more than six months. So there's this constant problems and, and disruption which is all totally unnecessary. It, 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 it's, the, it's the fact that this is all just self-imposed inconveniences and obstacles to trade. 
and trade is so absolutely vital. We're never going to do any of these things, you know, uh, uh, improving the NHS and improving social care and improving schools and improving hospitals and all the rest. We're never, ever going to do that unless the economy is successful. It's, it's all completely and utterly crazy. And, uh, you know, when you look at Brexit and you look at... Uh, the Prime Minister is destroyed, you know, uh, it's, whose career has ended. Uh, look at Cameron went off whistling, didn't he? Totally irresponsible Prime Minister who uh, had the referendum in order to see off uh, Farage and, and Phil spectacularly and then uh, decided to abide by it despite the fact it was only advisory. And then you look at uh, uh, Theresa May was completely out of her depth and uh, um, she... Uh, triggered Article 50 far too soon and she was the one who decided on an absolute hardest possible Brexit by insisting that we leave the customs union in the single market and then you look at Boris Johnson uh, the most a man who's now I think uh, universally despised a man who thought he was going to be the second Winston Churchill and have a have a laugh at the same time and uh, who is above everybody else responsible for what's, for what's happened for the catastrophe and then you look at Liz Truss and uh, uh, I mean what can you say about her uh, and then this silly little man running around telling us his plan is working and obsessing despite all the problems we're facing obsessing obsessing about trying to get a plane to go to Rwanda uh, a, a project which is almost certain to fail and it's all, as I say, it is all so completely and utterly pointless. Just making life deliberately difficult. And this is going on and on. Every week you hear more and more stories about how a uh, 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 negative consequence of Brexit. And the only thing people can say is, well, we've got our sovereignty. We've got our sovereignty. Listen to this. Gibraltar. It's ours. At the time we've been been arguing with Spain about whether we we should we should uh, uh, Gibraltar should be British. Now uh, they're on the point of joining Schengen, uh, the Schengen, Schengen, Schengen. And once that happens, it will mean that any EU citizen will be able to go in and out of Gibraltar at will. Whereas British citizens arriving in Gibraltar will now have to go through all the business of getting a visa all the biometrics, queuing up in the passport control. I mean, is that, is that the sovereignty we, we had in mind? You know, it's, uh, it's not surprising the whole world looks at us and thinks we're completely mad. Now, I did just want to um, finish by mentioning a book that I, I, I was sent a few weeks ago. Um, I'm not getting paid to mention this book at all, but it's a, it's an extremely good book, which um, is written by a, a gentleman by the name of Alan Drake, and he, uh, he he's been working at the Council of Europe in Strasbourg for about thirty years, I believe, and he's written this book about how to uh, uh, what we need to do to fix Britain, and uh, he, he's obviously quite an expert on on politics, and it's a really good read, and it's um it's, it's full of really good uh, suggestions and ideas. The book is called uh, Fixing Broken broken britain that's it. it it's um it, it's only available on uh, amazon at the moment but uh, I, i'll leave a link down below in case you'd like to have a look at it but i do, I do recommend it it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a thoroughly good uh, good summary of uh, what needs what needs doing to fix uh, the mess we're in anyhow that's uh, if you watch this far thank you very much indeed and uh, and so until next time bye for now <clears throat>